Hello, EBS viewers. Welcome to Great Minds. I'm Stephen Walt, professor at the Harvard Kennedy School. In this final presentation, I'm going to describe what I think America's role in the world should be. In brief, I'm going to argue that the United States should return to the basic grand strategy it followed for most of the past 125 years, a strategy that some of us have called offshore balancing. This is a realist grand strategy because it focuses primarily on the balance of power in key regions. It doesn't cover every aspect of U.S. foreign policy, but it does describe how the United States and where the United States should commit its military forces, especially in the event of war. Here are the core assumptions of this basic way of thinking about American strategy. First of all, the primary goal of American foreign policy is to promote the security, prosperity of the United States and to maintain individual freedom here in, the, uh, in our country. Second, the key to American security is the global balance of power and in particular maintaining a favorable balance of power in key areas. If the balance of power tilts against us, our ability to achieve any of those other objectives is going to be greatly diminished. So that's got to be the first and foremost goal. What does this mean for American strategy today? Well, China has now emerged as a potential peer competitor, a country that could easily be as powerful as the United States someday, and a potential regional hegemon in Asia. The United States should therefore maintain its own military capabilities and, of course, maintain a set of alliances intended to prevent China from dominating Asia, as I explained in my last talk. This also means that the American military role in Europe should be reduced and our NATO allies should take primary responsibility for their own defense. I would just remind you that NATO's European members not counting the United States, just the European members, have more than three times Russia's population. They have almost nine times its gross national product. Their economies are nine times bigger. And NATO's European members together spend three to four times more on defense every year than Russia does. What this means is that Europe has the wherewithal to contain and balance Russia on its own without a lot of American help. Not immediately, not by next week, but certainly over five to 10 years once committed to doing so. The United States, in addition to reducing its uh, role in Europe, should reduce its military role in the Middle East and also turn its current special relationships with a few countries there into more normal relationships and try to have at least business-like relationships with everyone in the region. So instead of, instead of supporting Saudi Arabia, Israel, and Egypt, no matter what they do, and having no relationship at all with Iran, we should have at least a business-like diplomatic relationship with all of them. And the reason to do that is it would maximize American leverage because all of those countries would have an incentive to start competing for American support and American help instead of being able to take it for granted or assuming it would never be available. Finally, the United States should learn from the experience of the past 15 or 20 years and stay out of the regime change and nation building business. The problem is that after you remove a foreign government, there's no institutions there, you get anarchy instead, and we don't know how to create effective government institutions in societies that we simply don't understand very well. The only thing worse than a really bad leader is no government at all, but we should avoid that whenever possible. The key point I want to emphasize is that offshore balancing is not isolationism. The United States would still be actively engaged economically, diplomatically, and in some parts of the world, militarily. Indeed, this strategy calls for the United States to be more active diplomatically because in, you're not trying to dictate everything with military power, and you have to coordinate action with your allies while keeping a keen eye on how the balance of power may be evolving in those critical regions.